The Netherlands is a delta country in the northwest of Europe with lots of water. Ever since the Stone Age, Holland has gone through a process of development and change. This has resulted in a country with a rich cultural heritage. Its history can be seen everywhere, in the way land and soil has been put to use, for instance, but also in the buildings in cities, villages and rural areas, the waterways, industrial estates and ports. Today, the Netherlands is a densely populated country. Space to live and work, for infrastructure and for recreation is in great demand. And new issues like climate change also require space. All these requirements need new plans to rearrange our urban and rural areas. This ability to recreate our land is considered the most fundamental heritage of the Dutch. Planning is in our blood. Since the late 19th century, government policy has been aimed at protecting and, if necessary, restoring our most important cultural heritage sites. But the need to preserve cultural heritage is often at odds with our plans for the future. The most important monuments are usually not at risk. However, our less monumental heritage sites, which often define the character of an area, could be in jeopardy. Therefore, we also need another strategy a strategy that includes cultural heritage in spatial planning. Because cultural heritage can add an extra cultural dimension and identity, and vice versa. Spatial development can also be an opportunity to safeguard cultural heritage. In this way, cultural heritage is no longer regarded as something which stands in the way of new developments, but rather provides an opportunity to inspire and add value to these developments. As an addition to conventional preservation of monuments, this alternative strategy became government policy in 1999. Four ministries joined forces to set out an initiative in the Belvedere policy document. The name of the document refers to the beautiful view of the future that it paints. The Belvedere approach has been called preservation through development. Its objective was twofold, to preserve cultural heritage and to increase spatial quality. The inclusion of cultural heritage in spatial developments can inspire, give direction and create added value. The Belvedere Memorandum included a 10-year implementation program aimed at changing the mentality in the implementation practice, a budget for implementation and a number of tools. Maps, a program for trainings, university chairs and subsidies. Belvedere is a way of thinking and acting, not through laws or regulations, but by seeing spatial development as self-evident and by utilizing cultural heritage within that development so both can benefit. Collaboration between public and private parties is therefore crucial. New spatial developments can sometimes give cultural heritage a new purpose, making it functional again. This not only keeps cultural heritage vital and gives it a new future, but it also vitalizes the area. A nice example of preservation through development can be found in the city of Den Bosch. The city wanted to restore its fortification walls, but lacked the funds. The solution was only found when the bigger picture was looked at. Not just the walls, but the entire inner city. So one theme, restoration, was expanded to include new themes such as tourism, water storage, urban renewal and infrastructure. This finally resulted in switching from one interested party, the cultural heritage expert, to several interested parties including municipal management, local entrepreneurs, residents and developers. This approach created more funding opportunities and ultimately, the quality of the whole area has improved. The concept of preservation through development is based on a proactive attitude, in which cultural heritage is included right from the outset. An open attitude, 
that creates opportunities to broaden and upscale projects. A role as a liaison, in which cultural heritage brings parties and interests together and serves as a source of inspiration. A high quality ambition, going for quality and maintaining that goal during the whole process. And finally, the fact that cultural heritage generates value, economically, environmentally, but also in the field of welfare and well-being. In concrete terms, a decade of preservation through development has resulted in 400 subsidized projects in the areas of implementation and gaining expertise. Three Belvedere University chairs, a cultural heritage academy to support cultural historians in their changing roles. A Belvedere training course with over 300 participants, new tools and manuals, and several communities of practice. Increasingly, the Belvedere legacy has become everyday practice and has become incorporated in many new policies. Dutch cultural heritage organizations Planners and architects have adopted the philosophy of preservation through development. But, more importantly, it has set many people in motion. People who learn from the past to design the future.